Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I bumped that. So let's see, I managed to misspell missile. I wonder if I can fix that. Let me let me see what happens here. What I mean, what can go wrong? I don't know. Hi, you all, Jim. Yep. Oh, let's see. The music's not playing. I didn't spell missile correctly. Yeah, we're going to do something here. Okay, so now it says missile tube mayhem, which is what is going to be happening today because, you know, it's Submarine Wednesday on Relaxing Painting with Dyson Dungeons, and um, I'm going to continue working on the submarine. But first, but first, there was a, uh, there was a software update, and this isn't working, so let's see if I can get it to work. As it's playing now. The little bar on my uh, screen is moving like the music is playing, but the counter isn't counting. So I can't tell if the music is playing on the stream or not. Stupid update happened and it wanted to restart and I didn't feel like restarting it. So, um, yeah. So I, it didn't get restarted. So I don't know if the music's playing or not. Anyway, uh, whether it is or isn't, it is time to proceed with Submarine Wednesday. And I want to welcome you to well, Relaxing Painting with Dyson Dungeons. Um, on Friday and Monday, I managed to finish some sort of demon thing. That was its official classification. It's all very purple. And it's got, you know, dark blue wings with red highlights and a fearsome face. Uh, glowy kind of shiny fur polished toenails so that uh, this may or may not ever show up in our DD &D campaign and if it does it looks like a very friendly sort of thing some sort of demon thing will no doubt be helpful and kind and you know, maybe feed us uh, pretzels and croissants and fritters and all of our favorite food. So I got that done. Just wanted to show you that things do happen on relaxing painting because today I am not sure what's going to happen. I also painted a skull pile because it's been sitting around as uh, if I run out of something to do, I better paint a skull pile. And I sort of ran out after I got the demon thing done. And now there's uh, that. And then this, this is this missile deck that I've been working on for a while. And the, the trick today, well, if I feel like cementing something, I need to cement this together. This is a special tube. There are 15 not special tubes and one special tube. This has a little spring and a lever in it that is supposed to launch a little plastic missile-like thing. Um, it's a special feature of this model. And when I built this when I was like in seventh grade or so, um, you know, the spring actually works. You can push this lever down and click it Put a missile in the tube and if you flick the lever and nothing breaks in the meantime um, it'll shoot up and push this little plastic missile up through here and the upper deck hatches probably like four or five inches or something it's really kind of lame but 
you know, it fires missiles. And um, that needs to be assembled. I haven't been assembling it because just haven't done it yet. But I've got the show you parts. There's parts under under the dust cover here. This is the tube into which the lever and everything goes. And in here is the spring and the lever. So at some point today, um, I'm going to work on that. The big thing I'm working on, though, and this is... This is um, I'm really kind of concerned about how this is going to go. This bulkhead, which is nicely painted with a control panel, this is a, like a missile launch control thing, right? Goes into the hull of the submarine. And then these three decks, go like there. There's another bulkhead on the other side, goes like there. And like there. Third one, I can't because I only have two hands. It's not, can't hold it all. But the, the missile tubes are supposed to nestle nicely into these tiny little wells down here, go through these, the holes in this deck, and then nestle nicely into the recesses on this deck. Right? That's what's supposed to happen. And then um, the missile tubes are all supposed to be exactly the right length so that they nestle top and bottom, and um, this distance apart. And the way things have not been fitting on this model so far, I'm very concerned <clears throat> that they're not going to fit. I started to fit them into the bottom, and it, I, don't, I think you can probably see here, there's like a little tab and on the bottom of each tube, there's supposed to be a little notch. But of course, the notch is very poorly formed. Okay, so take this one, for example, and try to fit it on here. Uh, find that um, the notch is not big enough for the tab. And so I've been kind of working at making those a little bigger. I worked on two of these last Wednesday and they didn't fit into the wells right, so I started filing down the bottoms. And now I'm concerned that I messed up two of the tubes by making them ever so much slightly short. Um, this process is supposed to be really simple. You know, like I would take this file that has a little notch shaped shape to it. It's rectangular, right? Just do some gentle filing like this. See the notch? Can you see it? Yeah, there it is. Okay, just do a little gentle filing so that the notch matches the tab. Here and, you know, and that one actually fits pretty well. Anyway, um, there's supposed to be 15 of those plus the special one there. And then this slides over it that and then it nestles into the top there which of course it doesn't do clear that out and then if there if it's all lined up correctly it's supposed to fit into the hull so that each deck is at exactly the right level of the bulkhead this bulkhead is on this side. The dark side is where the reactor is. That's pretty cool. And on this side is where all the machinery is. And so I've been able to paint that with the toolkit and everything. Oh, I need to finish paint. I need to darken the ladder. Um, I use a very fine tipped ballpoint, uh, not ballpoint, felt tip pen, very fine tipped felt point pen to paint, not really paint, but uh, mark the vertical and, and horizontal on the ladders. Well, my, uh, my task today is to um, basically get the notches on all of these tubes so that I can set them down 
into the bottom well and that they they set there like this one is I need to get 15 of those to work um, get them so that they can slide easily through here right now the fit is really tight these have to be primed and painted yet and if it's really tight like this what's going to happen is it's going to rub the paint off so I need to clean make the circles a little bit bigger uh, yeah so I'm gonna work on that and then I'm gonna try to fit after I get like six of these done you know enough so that I can kind of spread them out here six more so I'll have maybe half half of them done um, I'm gonna try to fit it into the hull and that'll be interesting because you haven't seen the hull of the submarine in a, in a long time uh, and so you haven't seen all the unless you've been watching recently you haven't been seeing the um, parts that are already assembled so that's the plan today um, you know filing down the little notch so that it goes like that okay is not a huge deal that's not a huge deal um, I just need to do that a bunch more times these are the ones I filed down last week and I I kind of I think I messed them up by filing the bottoms down too much but you know if it's if it isn't working I'll stick them in the back so I'm gonna keep this one that one I really kind of messed up I should be I should always remember not to try to do anything of any significance or importance during the last half hour of this stream because that's when things are likely to uh, go well okay some other little things like this this is painted I think you can see here that on the inside uh, there's a lighter rim um, in order for the cement to adhere there can't be any paint and so one of the other things I'll do is I, I'm just needing to go scrape off the paint around the inside of each of these and I you know I'm gonna start with that because this is this is the kind of thing that needs to be done that if I'm at least slightly careful you know at least slightly careful I won't mess things up very much and um, also it's fairly easy to fix if I scratch the paint a little bit I can clean it up what I do want to do is I want to do this over a paper towel because as I'm scraping away the paint on the inside of the top of these wells okay, as I'm doing this uh, paint dust that will get everywhere and on everything so the plan today is for me to spend as much time as possible just scraping away this excess paint in the tops of the missile tubes the, basically the covers at the tops um, as if I can spend as much time as possible doing this then I can't do other things that are a little bit more um, riskier in terms of the impact on and besides if I do this you can see that I'm basically not making any progress at all in the submarine it's creating this little circle of not paintedness on the tops and I th think it's probably been like a month now before anyone has seen any what you would call visible progress in the assembly of this submarine I have done things though you know these bulkheads are painted and they look pretty good I got this done these these are the pneumatic lines all the machinery that com creates com and stores and controls compressed air that goes to each of the missile tubes along these pipes and allows them to be launched is they're they're pushed out of the tube with compressed air um, I did it doesn't look like much 
okay? It really just doesn't, but it, it actually took a fair amount of time to get this so that it looked decent. Um, yeah, some, some parts of the submarine have been just incredibly frustrating. Um, and it's mainly been because the parts don't fit very well. Some of it's been that they're just, it's just really tiny, okay? There's a lot of minuscule detail, like the dials and the faces of some of the con dials here and the buttons and things on the control panels. Some were kind of fun and frustrating, like the tools on the pegboard there. Painting tiny things and So that takes me a long time because I'm quite s slow at most everything nowadays. But the frustrating parts are where, where the parts just don't fit and almost everything on this submarine hasn't fit. So the thought of getting 15 plus the special missile launching tube to fit not only on three decks but then to get the decks to fit within the hull of the submarine. That's why I want to test it today, <clears throat> just to see you know, what kind of uh, extremely time-consuming little fiddly things need to be done just to get the parts to fit together. Once this section is done, you know, other than getting the decks to fit again in the bulkheads. The rest of the submarine, and you'll see that a little bit later, are two large machinery compartments. And it's just a whole lot of... There's two, com two compartments with two decks each filled with stuff like this, all of which will be painted this, this same sort of tan color. It's got like little pipes connecting them. Oh, it's not a lot of detail painting, except maybe on the bulkheads, there's things like fire extinguishers and controls and stuff. So most of those will be, you know, they'll have like buttons and dials and knobs and things that will need to be painted some contrasting colors so that the detail shows. But I'm really hoping that those will move along kind of quickly, at least relatively quickly, meaning like weeks instead of months. I hope that scraping sound is coming through. It's really pretty annoying. Yeah, and you, you should be able to hear it because then, you, then you'll know that something is happening. So after I finished the uh, mess deck in the control room, which was a lot of little detail painting and parts that didn't fit. Some of them didn't fit in a significant way. And once I got that into the hall and got into this deck, I thought, well, this one might be a little bit easier, but it's really quite challenging. Again, because the, when, like cementing the halves of the missile tubes together, it turns out that uh, they, they don't all line up perfectly so that the seams show so it was, filing and sanding down the seams before priming and then it's you know discovering that the holes in this deck into which through which the tubes slide or at least they're supposed to <coughs> you know are a little too tight so that once the diameter of the missile tubes actually is increased slightly because they'll have a layer of primer and a layer of paint on them um, See, like I'm doing this here. I need to do that to the inside of these holes as well with a round one, just to get rid of any paint that might be in there from having painting the, painted the decks. So get any paint that's slopped in there out of the way and then increasing the diameter of the hole just ever so slightly so that the missile tubes little slides through them without scraping off the paint. 
once they're painted. The fitting that I'm going to be doing today is before painting, but the what I'm really, I'm not so much interested in whether or not the missile tubes slide through those holes yet, but I want to know they are the right height. Mm -hmm. Whether they're all the same height, so that everything isn't all tipsy toppies, topsy turvy. And that's a good phrase. Um, they all need to be the same height and they all need to be the correct height. And that combination is, seems unlikely. There were only three tubes, little tubes, that held the periscope and the uh, radio antenna in the control room. And the three of them, all different heights, none of the three being the correct height. So they need to be, there needed to be some careful measurement and some careful um, shortening, you know, cutting them down and filing them flat. And then I got them to work. Because otherwise, things just didn't fit. And that was not just one kit, but it was all three kits that I have. I have three of these kits um, because they are vintage 1960s stuff. And, you know, parts are broken, parts are missing, parts are badly painted, some are glued or some not cemented in this case I think they're just glued together somehow very badly so like these missile tubes you, you can see that there's some like on these there's some slight variation in the color yeah it's because they've they actually have missile tubes from three separate kits in order to get set of them that were either not badly glued together or in some cases uh, the, the molding itself left it it wasn't the injection molding didn't inject it properly and so there's like a dimple a very obvious dimple looked like a big dent maybe you can see it here on this one you can see a little change in the reflection there. Yeah, it looks like there's a big dent in the tube. And I'm gonna have to make sure I get that, you know, oriented. When I assemble this eventually, it will happen sometime yet in 2024, probably, things are going. Eventually, this thing will get assembled. And I wanna make sure that I orient those so that the dent doesn't show. Maybe I'll like put them in the back row and rotate them in such a way so that uh, it's hidden in the small space between the tubes. So yeah, you have seen very little progress on the missile deck which in the you know the scheme of things looked like something that would be really fast and straightforward and turns out not to be not just because of the painting but because of the challenges of assembling things that are not well manufactured You know, almost done with this. There's like three more to go. And then, um, then I'm going to do something similar to the, this one here, by kind of clearing out the insides of those. 
then I'm very good going to very carefully um, file out the slot in the bottom of the missile tube so that it fits into the tab on the bottom deck and tabs and like I said I want to get like maybe seven total done get seven of them done and um, then, then test fit it all to see how it goes into the hull According to the instructions, this bulkhead should already be installed in the hull, should be cemented in. But what I have found is that um, something like that needs to be installed at the same time that the decks are installed. Uh, the, the way it's supposed to work, in theory, is that that gets cemented into the hull and then the decks will very nicely fit into these slots okay but what happens in reality is that um, they don't go in perfectly straight you know no matter how you try it it uh, wobbles okay and when it wobbles <coughs> Then the front and the back, <coughs> looking at it from the side, the front and the back are the same. And see what, what I mean is that they attach into the hull just along the side. Okay. And it's supposed to be perfectly perpendicular, but it might not be. It might lean a little bit one way or the other. And if it leans a little bit one way or the other, then it's not uniform all the way across. And so the deck might fit in the front, but it might not fit in the back. Um, what's more likely is it'll fit in the back, but it'll be either be a gap in the front because it leaned away from where the deck goes. I'll show you. It's like this is supposed to fit into the slot like this. But if it leans a little bit this way, then there's a gap. Okay. If it leaned a little bit that way, there's a gap. If it leans a little bit this way toward the deck, then it won't fit at all that won't go through because it's smaller so what I found is that pretty much the whole thing needs to just be like held and pushed in all at the same time <clears throat> and it's worked so far with the first uh, set of compartments you know, the torpedo room and the mess deck and the control deck at all I haven't even had to cement them into the hall because the tolerances are so tight that it's just being held by friction hoping that will happen this too mm. Well, it's been great fun scraping paint out of here. <laughs> I suppose there are ways, if I were like really careful, to tape these things off. Put something in the little wells, so that when I painted the deck, okay, this is all painted the, this uniform gray color, with the big brush, trying to, you know, not have brush marks on the on the deck that when I did that that I wouldn't have painted the inside of these wells but I knew that this would have to happen just because I wanted the deck to get painted and paint got inside the wells and just so that's what it is and then I get to spend uh, what like 20 minutes or something talking about things not fitting while I'm scraping paint off Something that, um, yeah. This one, I'm just gonna do this. This one is open. That is where the little 
where a hatch goes, which I have yet to, well, I haven't painted that yet. Okay, well, I need to paint the inside of the hatch and the outside to match these colors. But this is where the uh, missile launch thing goes. Hi, Boo. Yep, I will do a flip. I will, I will. Clean this up. Get as much of a little paint dust off as I can. Okay, well, this, this deck seems to have survived that process. And, um... Oh, yeah, this. I haven't talked about this yet. <sighs> One more thing. No, let me get this flip out of the way, though. I moved a whole bunch of stuff out of the way. I think I can do this one. This is the paint or don't paint flip thing. Three out of three. Four out of four. Five out of five. Okay. That was weird. Obviously not. Random isn't working today. <clears throat> um, yeah, there is actually some possibility I might paint something today. And that would be... See, what I'm doing here is I'm just using this file and going around. Going around on the inside here where, like, I painted the deck on the top. And, oh, my... Okay, yeah, I forgot about that. Oh my god. Did this. Um, okay, so when these pieces here got cemented in, okay, when this goes into the hull, you'll be able to see the bottom of it. And when you look at the bottom of it, I didn't want to see the openings, the very rough openings where those tabs went in. So I put some plastic filler in there. Okay. Um, and by doing that, I, I need to sand it down and make it smooth. You also see, and I don't know, I should have taken these off. Um, there's these circles. Okay, these are not an integral part of the submarine architecture. I will put it that way. These are just mold flaws, basically. I do not know. They're just on parts all over the place on this submarine. There are mold flaws like that. And you'll be able to see them. But I decided that I would just leave them here instead of trying to scrape them, scrape all of them off. But the bottom of this isn't painted. It needs to be painted this gray color. And it would actually make sense before I go through all the trouble of clearing paint out of the wells, right? Before I bother doing that, I paint this because that'll put more paint in the wells, probably. The other thing I could do is, and I did it on the top deck here, since the primer, this is actually primer, not the gray paint, is almost exactly the color that uh, the gray paint is, is that I could um, to do it really quickly, just sand this off, okay? Sand these down, and then I, I would have to tape, I would tape around the edges, because I don't want to spray all of this work here. Right, I want to cover that up, is just give it a zap with primer instead of painting it with a brush. Yeah, it's a good thing I flipped that over because um, I would have totally missed that until much later. So this is another opportunity to do something like this. I just I need to sand down. filler that I put in there. Right now it's just the lump that shows at the top. 
And if I sand it like this, then hopefully it will be a smooth surface. This is the front of it. This is the side from which one is looking. And that, you know, no matter how I fill these in, it's just always, it just never really does the job. But uh, there it is. I'm going to take one of these off though. This is the one that's on the very front and it shows the most. These back here, I don't know. Let me see how this goes. If this comes off easily and quickly and I don't break anything on the front, then I, then I might just take all of them off, which I probably should have done before I messed around and put anything on them at all. But I, these, like I said, these, you can see them now that when I'm filing them, you can see the color change. I have no idea why they are there. They show up on some of the bulkheads, you know, in places where it just, it's just obvious. And now there's this raised circle of plastic where one should not be. Okay. After I finish this, cleaning this one circle off, it should have been easy to do, but it is turning out not to be. Because I don't want to break off the stuff above it is I'm actually going to do some painting. I'm going to paint this thing the, the gray color it needs to be. Uh, because as I said, I'll probably get paint in the wells here. And if I do that, then it makes sense to not clean out the paint in the wells when more paint is going to get in the wells. Taking this one off because it's bright in the front, and it's really it's gonna, you're going to see it when you look at it from well when you see the hall eventually during this stream as I test fit pieces, you'll you'll see what I mean. With most of these, these are really big chunks of plastic. With most of these, I can rub it with this file and it just like pretty much flakes off. It's not, this is being really uncooperative. And you can still see there's a raised edge there. It says I'm filing it and not getting onto the surface below it. Then I know that it's all at the same level. And I give it a sanding and uh, probably use some of the really fine sandpaper as well just to polish it so that uh, it's not a big textural change. All right, so the next step I wasn't planning on this step is I'm going to paint this. Uh, the bottom of this deck, the gray color, uh, the deck color. Yeah, and then we'll let that paint dry, and then I'll clean out these holes. And while it's drying, I will um, file out the slots on more missile tubes so that they fit into the place where they need to fit. All right, there. 
get these out of the way so I don't have too much plastic dust everywhere. I'm going to put down a piece of paper towel. Underneath this, because this part, these parts are painted, and I don't want to scrape the paint off. Move some of the tools out of the way so I don't knock into them. These are the two I messed up. I'm going to put those over here so that they're separate from the ones I haven't messed up, which is this. Um, yeah, the paint that goes on here is this neutral gray paint. I will be using this large brush and just okay, this is the front is um, using long brush strokes trying to get as little paint into these holes as possible okay do that and turn the whole thing nicely uniformly neutral gray be how relaxing painting goes well i'm talking about that and getting this mixed up these hatches here, these are the top hatches of the missile tubes, are supposed to be painted yellow. Okay. And as I have said over and over, getting each of these painted, you know, in a beautiful circular fashion, um, I mean, even the most skilled painter, getting the edges just absolutely right and perfectly circular, next to impossible. So what I've thought about doing is I've got two other kits with a part like this is it, it is possible to take this like that and make a mask out of it because you know they line up right these these holes all line up with the hatches and then making a mask you know Put it, holding it down really tight and then uh, spray painting it and since this is this would just be an extra part from one of the other kits it wouldn't it wouldn't be a real loss the issue with it though and you might be able to see it is that the holes here are bigger in diameter than the top of the hatches so if I use this as a mask without modifying it um, the paint would go over the edges of these hatches rather than right up to the edges. So if I'm, you know, if I use one of these as a mask, what I might be able, if I could get a hole punch, okay, a hole punch that was exactly the diameter of the top of these hatches, I could put like tape across it, okay, mask it with tape, and then punch holes in the tape that would match these and then that would make a perfect mask. So at some point, you know, that's just another reason why this will take like seven months instead of a week to do, is you know, taking the time to make that mask. The other thing is these missile tubes need to be primed and painted and you know, you can't do it while you're holding them, right? So I'm thinking what I need to do is, you know, I've got a board, a big piece of two by four and some dowels is uh, just drill holes, stick 16 dowels in the board so that these are held vertical and then spray paint them that way. That's another piece of uh, mechanical manipulation that probably, I really probably should do off screen, you know, because it'll be like a drill going Neh, Neh, and cutting little dowels off and gluing them into a board.
And so speaking of the future, I mentioned this on Monday and I need to let everybody know again, uh, Relaxing Painting with Dyson Dungeons will not be streaming for a couple of weeks. I was initially planning to stream on Friday, but that's not going to work. We're uh, doing some more, I am at least, um, doing some traveling with, with family uh, and for family like I did earlier this year. And I had to take a couple of weeks off uh, to do, you know, help, help move some stuff for my brother. And at the same time, visiting sister and brother-in-law. Okay. Uh, more, more travel and family stuff. And so uh, this will be the last stream for a couple of weeks. And then I'll be back after that, after not streaming for a while, I'll start streaming again and hopefully uh, be able to make significant progress on this thing. It works today. It's gray. You can see it's very close in color, especially as it dries to the primer. I think I'll call that a success. That paint brush is going to hold a lot of paint. And I'm hoping that this lump here, which will be near the front, that little unevenness there levels out. What happens is this sets up really quickly, so I brushed across, but then I brushed into it from the other direction. It uh, lifted up some of the paint. Yeah, and it's on the edges, and I can't touch that, and that's a mess, so... What I want to do is put that aside, and not let it touch anything that's already painted. Let it dry while I, um, first of all, clean the brush. And then second, I can't use that, that's all full of plastic filings, yuck. Uh, and then after that, Clean out the wells, the, the holes there where the missile tubes go through. Sometime or other, I need to get my wall clock. There's a wall clock up there. Falling back. Make it fall back. Well, I've been spending a lot of time talking about all the stuff that has to happen on this submarine. I haven't talked about anything, you know, fun, like 60s cartoons or whatever. Um, yeah, I haven't done that. Maybe I won't. I don't know. So again, what, we're, what I'm looking at here is that, as you can see, the tab here is definitely larger than the slot here. And so I'm just sort of using this square file to file in the slot without damaging anything else.
Oh, what can I chat about? You know, as I've been building this, I have chatted about the, uh, you know, the destructive power of the submarine and mutually assured destruction and all sorts of other cool stuff from the 1950s and 60s when we were afraid of that a new when we did duck and cover you know when nuclear annihilation was just you know something that was going to happen any day so we might as well get ready for it one of our, our school our grade school was a designated fallout shelter we had one of those black and yellow radiation signs on it designated fallout shelter so you know if our city were attacked, we, we wouldn't have to go very far. Just go down to the basement of the school and, I, and then we'd be safe for the two weeks it took for the radiation to dissipate enough for us to come up to the surface again. It's handy, at least for us. You know, not so handy for the parents who were at work hopefully their maybe their work site you know was a designated fallout shelter too and basically any anything that was in a basement of a building was a designated fallout shelter seriously like especially if it didn't have too many windows But it kept some people employed, you know, they got to go around and put up yellow and black radiation signs on buildings. We were all, we were all taught, there was, there were lessons to be taught on TV and in schools about what, what to look for, you know, to look for the black and yellow sign. Because then, you know, when you, after you finish ducking and covering, you, you need Got to run down to the shelter. I guess that'll fit. So that was that was a cool thing back then. When back in the in the day when this prototype was first launched. Used to be right there in the fallout shelter. They never did tell you what you're supposed to do for two weeks, though. You know? Two weeks, why not? You know? Why not, like, 13 days? Why not 18 days? Why two weeks? You know, nice. Suppose, you know, you had to, if you were in a real fallout shelter, you know? Not, not just the, like the basement of the school where you could look through the windows that had been blown out. That you had to probably wanted to cover with blankets or cardboard or something so that the fallout didn't get in through the blown out windows. It would make sense to do that. We were, by the time we got to like sixth or seventh grade, we would definitely know that it wouldn't be good. You know, fallout sheltering wouldn't be effective if, if the windows were blown out. Um, so yeah, we'd cover it up and live, live in perpetual darkness because the electricity would be out, right? So I don't know, how would we know? We'd have to keep track of like the little lights, slight changes in illumination that leak through the cardboard coverings of the wind blown out windows. Take these off so I can see better. Yeah, and then, you know, since it was a school, there might be some chalk down in the basement or in the fallout shelter part of the school. And you could uh, mark the days on the wall. And when it, when it got to 14, you could go, oh yeah, now it's safe, let's go out. Because it has a shelter. 
Oh, I need this back. But, you know, the electricity's out. And even if the school had, like, a TV in the basement, I think we probably did. You know, it's not going to work because there's no electricity to run it. And the broadcast towers would have all been broken anyway, so there wouldn't be anything to see. Be able to get the emergency channel. Comrade? I don't know, I had a weird name. I think that broadcast emergency things. The, um, yeah, so, so you'd have this basement full of grade school kids. It's a small grade school. Then, so probably, what, 30 times 8? 250, 200. 20, 250 kids, something like that. It's a lot, all crammed up in this basement with nothing to do for two weeks. Talk about, you know, how, how to spend your time. And they disassembled these. I talked about this on the stream before. You know, they just just stopped having them when they finally, when when enough people figured out that it, it's just it's not going to work. You know, nuclear Armageddon is not going to you're not going to survive by hiding out in the school basement. So they decommissioned them. Yeah. We found the. The barrels, they had barrels of, uh, it's like a 50 gallon drum of water or something. I don't know if they ever replenished it or cleaned it up or whatever. You know. But there were these, these cardboard barrels. That when we were little, they looked like 50 gallon drums that were filled with little candies. And that was what, you know, that's what we were going to eat. And, you know, to a Kid in grade school, it didn't seem all that bad as that you're going to spend two weeks eating candy. I guess they were like, maybe they were vitamin enriched or something. They were supposed to provide calories and basic nutrition. Looking back at it, the whole idea was really pretty dumb. My dad, who had been in the military and the Air Force, and my uncle, who was still active in the Air Force during that period of time, and they they knew that that was just a dumb thing, that there really wasn't any point in hiding in the basement of schools for two weeks. But there it is. Yeah. We had a shelter in our school. I remember correctly, uh, after they decommissioned it, and we we found the barrel of the red and yellow hard candy. This isn't going to fit at all. It's like the diameter is. Yeah, this one's a real. Some of them are just a real problem. Yeah, so we found this uh, cardboard barrel of candies, and I think it was like, well, what do we do with this? It's still good, and it was like, well, yeah, it's supposed to last forever. So I think we all just got to take as much as we wanted. I don't remember it being terribly good. It was just, you know, it's, it's kind of generically citrus flavored hard candies. But I guess it was like the equivalent of getting a 
vitamin pill or part of it. Sure. Anyway. Get free candy. Started growing up in the 19, in the late 50s and early 60s. It's just that kind of thing. And so that's why we had this, uh, these submarines to uh, make it so absurd to think about. <laughs> you know. Kids hiding in the basements of schools, eating little orange, and red, and yellow candies for two weeks. That uh, that no one would do it. You know, blow the blow up the world. Right? Why blow up the world when you don't have to, right? Anyway, you know we seem to be getting back to the stage where people are talking about doing that. I guess it's been too long. Maybe you'll be lucky, maybe you'll be in a building that'll be designated as a fallout shelter. You'll get some cardboard barrels of hard candy down there. And then what you know, you know that somebody will find them, right? And then, then you'll be locked down there and during nuclear holocaust, wanting to eat your yellow and red candies and They'll be gone because somebody ate them all. Mm -hmm. Took them all home and just ripped them off and took them home for Halloween or something. The kind of thing that would happen. these it's interesting just some of these the gap is actually bigger than it needs to be some of these it's just hardly even present and I haven't been paying attention to the colors but I think that it's kit specific depending on which kit the tube came from some of them have the uh, impression at least of a tear of a slot for the tab on both sides some of them just one side it only has to be on one side i hope that the side i'm doing is the side that needs to be done guess we'll find out when i put some of these in and test fit them anyway <laughs> Letting that paint dry. When you're doing relaxing painting, right, at least a fair amount of the stream has to be just paint is drying. Because it goes on and it needs to dry. Oftentimes before something else can be done. So dried paint is an essential essential step in any painting show. Now, the other thing, you know, they say cement these in ahead of time, right? and then put that other one on and then put this one on without test fitting them all. But when you cement them in, there's no assurance that they'll all be vertical. If they're tilted just, if any one of these is tilted just a little bit from perfect vertical, the whole thing is not going to work. Um, and perfect vertical depends on these being perfectly flat on the bottom 
which of course who can count on that given the quality of the, of the work and then they had to be perfectly flat on the top as well in order to fit into the little wells on top you know, where they're supposed to fit so yeah I think what happened when I did this when I was young is you just slather a bunch of cement on the bottom here and then slide that on and slide it in and slather a bunch of cement on top there and if there's any problems because the cement dissolves the plastic it isn't it isn't a glue it's a welding it dissolves the plastic uh, that any problems just sort of melted away way to do that kind of thing but that's probably what it is all right so while that is still drying and this is now wait I've got this that needs to be done it has to be done with some delicacy because if it jams up like if the little lever doesn't move freely or the spring springs onto the floor and gets lost or something it could be a real problem so this this in this little envelope is the special one the that this lever goes in there so if i were to like test fit this right it go together like this the difference I mean, just another big difference is that for cementing this together, the, the all of the other ones had um, these little prongs that went into the holes. This has special slots on the inside for cementing, where just the tiniest little drops of cement are supposed to go in a way that it doesn't interfere with the with the launching of the missile or anything else there's and then there'll, there'll need to be some significant filing of the you know the surfaces and getting rid of the seam after it's put together file down a little bit of it here because those are really large But I've been putting this off because it's like uh, one more thing to really mess up, right? And why would I want to do that? But I'm waiting for paint to dry and this has to be done. So give it a go. It's being overly cautious with everything, so it's going very slowly. You know, like getting this excess plastic off here. I could you know, just really more aggressively file it away, but I don't want to. Don't want to mess things up or any more than I can avoid it. down here's yeah it's right on the next to the ridge there's a, a like a band of piping or something around the bottoms of these tubes and these bits of plastic are right adjacent to it so I need to file this fairly carefully so I don't get rid of whatever detail there is on this model Those nubbins of plastic are from when they come off of the sprue, the, the tree on which they are molded. And careful modelers don't break them off, they cut them off. And they cut them off so that there's a little bit of extra plastic left on the piece that you want. And the reason for that is that, although it doesn't look like it, it is much easier to sand or file that off than it is to fill in 
the uh, the gap that it would the ragged gap it would leave if you broke it off and you broke off the part. Yeah. Broke part of the plastic off of the part. So then then you're left with this sort of thing. With someone with uh, better eyesight and eye hand coordination would be able to finish in like a tenth the time that's taking me. Does you know, old and slow. that after it's cemented together. Let me show you then how this is supposed to go together by taking out these very important little pieces. Okay, this is a hatch. This, this is a special hatch that goes here. It's in from underneath. That way, it's supposed to eventually be held in place. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't fit. Nice. It's held in place by the missile tube below it, and it's supposed to open like that so that the missile can launch. But there's primer and there's paint in the way. So this has to be uh, carefully preserved. This is a step ladder that has to go into the control room somehow. It's a ladder up to the escape hatch. This is a spare chair. Gives you this, this, an idea of the size, the size of some of the parts in the submarine. This is one of the little chairs that was an extra. And these are the bits that go here. So the spring goes here. Ever. This bit going inside of the spring. Down. And that little, this, that bit there goes through the hole in the bottom. And as you can see, I mean, this is, this is poised to just be a disaster. They're shooting off into space. Right? I mean, just really, yeah, that, if that pops out of there, it's just going to be really not good. And then this gets cemented over it, like that. And then this lever, since this protrudes on the bottom, goes down to here, which I'm not going to do now, because that just puts more more uh, pressure on the spring, increasing the opportunity for it to go springing, which I do not want it to do. I want it to remain motionless here. That's really close, the cement spot there, really close to, to this. the application of the cement I had this which is a precision applicator it was a disaster because for some reason there is this plug in it there is this blue plug made of the kind of plastic that this dissolves and so I've been I've been cutting down into it and manipulating it and dr drilling into it to keep it precision and I it just didn't work. So I gave that up and got some of this, which is supposed to have, you know, a precision application. Every time I touch that, it is a potential disaster. So 
this precision application brush, look at that, right? That's not precision. So I'm going to, I have been using one of these brushes that's pretty much lost its bristles. Just this little point and trying to use that um, to apply the cement extremely carefully. Let's hope that I am successful. Because I can't really tell if there's actually any getting on the surface or not. Tell that is to put the parts together and see if they stick, right? They do That'd be a good thing. Bump that and spill it, right? That would be bad. So I'm going to put these together, and if there's cement on them. They will adhere. And if not, then I need to try something else. And they're, they're not, okay? So that little brush thing, whatever I was whatever I was doing with it, it was not actually applying cement to the surfaces. Um let me try this. Try the tip of a toothpick. And see if that works any better. I think it is. Works together and see what happens. So a little bit on one okay so so far this is this is not working it didn't work that brush didn't work I'm going to um, take a look at my brushes here 
see if I can find another sacrifice brush. Uh, this one, well. Yeah. Maybe this one. At some point, something needs to work. Okay. I need to get the cement on there some. That's definitely working. It's that old paint in the brush. Lovely. I cleaned the brush like 10 times and never got it clean enough. Paint won't do this from the one. Okay, I didn't spill the cement. This is now adhering. And I'm just I'm just gonna hold it by hand the whole time. Just not. There's black paint in there. Yeah, so I so I could tell that cement was coming on because the cement dissolved the paint really well. This is going to be my cement brush, but it needs to be thoroughly cleaned. This, this is a good use of my time here. I need to uh, hold this for like a couple minutes. So this goes there, and then when it goes up, it's supposed to spring like that. There's the clearances are not, you know, as you can see. It's sticking on something, the parts just don't move freely. Keep manipulating it and it, it starts to uh, whatever is sticking starts to wear out but yeah you can hear it go pink the thing about this one now is that um, when I spray paint them I don't want to get paint in this that's one of the reasons why I was re you know, trying I, I just wasn't do working on that. Oh man. Seriously. It's, it's just not holding here on the top. Like, okay, see? That is now separated. I'm going, this is, this is just not going well. So, um,. I'm going to some. Yeah, I'm going to do this. Get this out of the way. How well this is going to go. Let me get some of this paint out of here first. Let's see how dirty this brush is, and how how powerful a solvent. Um, I don't know. I think it's. I think it might be dissolving the bristles. <laughs> Actually, I think that's what's happening. Is okay. See, this is not holding together. So I need to get cement on the inside of the tube. to be really careful here because if it leaks out to the outside and it dries, 
I can sand it down, but if I get a fingerprint on it, if I touch it with my finger, then it will not be good at all. It will be very bad. So weird. It isn't this the cement is actually dissolving the bristles of the brush. Nice. Brush did its job. It got cement on the spots where it needed to be. Anyway, this tube, what I, what I was saying is that when I paint this, okay, and I spray paint it, I don't want to get paint in here because that'll just, it'll just, even though it's not working terribly well now, it'll work even worse if it's all covered in paint. So it'll be a job of, of very careful masking before I apply paint, especially the lever part. Definitely don't want to get paint on the lever of the inside because the paint will just jam it up. I'm going to hold this for a little bit. Let's see, I might take an early break. We'll see. Um, if that paint is dry on the thing that I painted earlier, I'll clean out the, the holes. So yeah, I mean, getting this whole thing beautifully painted, since it's the front of it, it's going to show. Without getting paint on the moving parts is... Yeah, that'll be a thing. It'll be one of those things. Okay. Well, I've got some closed pins. If I get these on right, it will hold it nicely. If I don't, the parts will start sliding back and forth. And then it'll form an even bigger ridge. Okay, this is weird. The, um, usually... Yeah, so they're not they're not perfectly aligned. That's why you get little ridges on either side, so that one side is off to the other, you know. Definitely not at all. But they're also not moving, so It's getting better. If you're not aligned, one side will be higher than the other uh, on opposite sides in the opposite way. In this case, like this this part on the bottom here is actually bigger than the top part because I'm feeling a ridge on both sides but that's why I end up filing and sanding these things to get rid of the ridge okay now that's what I was afraid of is that there's a gap down on the bottom here now this is not cemented down here so I need to get I'm gonna put it right on the very very bottom they say you can do this by capillary action right we'll see if that's true that it's possible to get just a little bit of cement and have it be drawn into that gap just by i'm not too worried about the bottom okay because it's not going to show
know, this whole thing. I'm glad I put this off. <laughs> this is it's not not fun. Not much fun. Hopefully that cement will be on the bottom. You can see a little bit there, but it's out of sight. None of it is affecting this sliding bit. Yeah, there's a little bit on there, right? If that cements itself to it, it's not going to move. I get all of the cement off of that. We need, I don't know if I can get any. I'm just going to keep moving this to make sure it's not adhering. And I'm going to come back to it in a little bit to make sure it's not like the plastic, the cement isn't even moving around or anything. Because when I did this right there, I might have gotten it. So it touched this little prongy slidey bit. It's moving pretty freely now. It's a good, that's a good sign. really like to do is put like a little bit of like Vaseline or something on it um, that it wouldn't adhere. I almost made a disaster here. If I do, if this is a disaster, um, I do have other kits I can get it out. So far it doesn't appear to be a disaster. Too worried about that. If it if it opens up a little bit on the bottom, this actually goes cements into um, this spot here. It needs to be made a little smaller, but once that's cemented in there, it'll hold it together really well. So if there's a gap, it would that would keep it from being a problem. At least I, I don't appear to have cemented that little prong into the tube. I seem to have avoided that, at least at this point. Got the cement a little bit too close to it. And it was just being not quite careful enough. But the way it works is that this lever comes down, slides over there, and that's it. When you slide it back, the spring pushes up the missile um, that's just supposed to launch all the way through the top of the submarine. I don't know if it actually will or not. Guess we'll find out. I remember it not really working very well. At least it's okay so far. So I'm going to um, 
get the round file out. Since this is fairly dry now, it's not completely, but pretty dry, is I'm going to just go around and around on the inside of these to get the paint out. Just any excess paint in there because these need to be um, large enough for the missile tubes to slide in without scraping off the layer of primer and yellow paint once that's done. I'll do this in a preliminary way and then um, if necessary I'll just I can enlarge them. do is make sure that the file is in deep enough because I don't want it to pop out and then scratch the painted surface and I don't want to have to try to repaint that that leaves that does leave brush marks I'm gonna mess around with this for like 10 minutes I guess it'll take a while every three or four of them I'm going to go back to that tube to make sure that um, Make sure that it's still not cemented. It, it hasn't cemented itself in place. Interesting. You can kind of feel where there's paint because it's slippery. It's hard to describe it, but it's... The paint has... When a file hits it, it's kind of a slick surface. This is probably going to take a fair amount of manipulation later. Um, to get all the tubes to slide through. I'm, I'm just sensing that these things are going to... The, the, you know, it's just going to be too tight a fit. This is at least a start. These needle files are nice, they're nice. There's flat ones, and square ones, and triangular ones, and round ones. And for soft stuff like this plastic, it's pretty effective. I'm going to do one more, and then I'm going to go back to the missile launching tube and test it, test it some more. This is, this is good news. The good news is that it's, uh, it's not cemented in place. That's, I'll say that it isn't sliding perfectly, but I can maybe put a little bit of like Vaseline on it or something later. So at least that isn't uh, a problem at this point. So if I clean these out, more or less, they're not going to be perfect, but they'll be not giving, getting most of the paint out, I think. And like I said, I might end up having to spend a good deal of time increasing the diameter of these holes by a 64th of an inch. You know, and that's about 
It's about the kind of thing it takes to make things fit. Okay, I may end up having to do that. When I get back to streaming after taking a trip. Doing a little more family stuff and a little more travel stuff. But after break, I am going to do some test fitting just to see what I'm dealing with in terms of these missile tubes, you know, with the right length, whether I can get them lined up or not. Might even, what I might even do, and I've actually thought about this, is to keep, is to hold them in place. And I might use a little rubber cement on the very bottoms, like the bottom of the tube to hold some in place here. Because that, I mean, it, it holds things, it's, it's sticky, but it can also be cleaned off pretty easily. And it isn't a permanent thing. So I probably I might end up doing that if I can't get them to just stay. Six of these left. Yeah. And it doesn't look like much is accomplished today because actually not much has. I've done a little filing. I've moved, gotten some paint out of some grooves, um, getting some more paint here. I did cement one more tube together. And so far it seems to be okay, which is pretty nice because that could have gone badly. After the break, um, well, you're actually going to be able to see uh, the submarine hall and what's been accomplished so far, so that you'll you'll be able to see that submarine construction has actually been happening, and I haven't shown that in a while. So I think that'll be pretty nice to do that. So That's something to look forward to. That's a reason why you should come back after the break and check out what's happening. So what I will be doing is taking these missile tubes, some of them, not all of them, taking that bulkhead, putting it in the submarine and seeing if these decks, seeing if the missile tubes line up, if they're the right length and whether the decks then will um, actually go, well, actually fit. And if they do fit, that would be a wonderful thing. If they do fit, then I can move forward with um, timing, painting, and installing this entire middle missile deck. So we'll see how that goes. A couple of these have a lot of paint on them. Probably just because of the, the direction in which I was brushing stuff. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't look like much. There's some, some gray decks here, some tubes that haven't been primed or painted yet. Um, I know that for like the last three weeks, it's like well, nothing has been accomplished other than painting a control panel and a tool pegboard. But 
today might be today might be one of those days. Maybe you know, it all all goes well. Today might be one of those days where some you know significant breakthrough happens in terms of being able to move forward with the assembly of this. If things fit well, whether they fit together well or not, since I'm going to have the hull of the submarine out, the inside of the hull in this compartment needs to be painted. There's two colors. The center of it is painted light blue, this color. Okay, so that's on the bulkhead, but it also needs to be on the inside of the hull of the submarine so that the color, you know, the So that portion of the submarine, that compartment of the submarine is, you know, uniformly colored. That's important. So depending on how this fitting goes, you know, if it takes like a 20 minutes, I'm going to paint the light blue part of the inside of the hull. And if it takes an hour and a half and it's still not accomplished because nothing works, then we'll just go, huh, well, more submarine d disaster. What can you say? There seems to be a fair amount of submarine disasters. Make sure that this is still working. Yes, it still is. I didn't accidentally cement it all together. fair amount of careful filing and sanding especially right there down at the bottom because um, the seams just didn't line up at all period okay but this is working and I haven't broken it yet I'm going to let this set, and hopefully when I come back... Hopefully when I come back, it'll still be working. I need some sort of benign... Vaseline will actually dissolve this or not. This plastic can be temperamental, but it would be nice to have some sort of, maybe a, some sort of lubricant on there so that it slides more easily. The more I manipulate it, the more it slides more easily. It's like if there's any chunks that are in the way, uh, they're, they're rubbing off. Okay, well, this tube is ready for after break, it'll be ready for filing, um, filing down the, the ridges like the other ones, filing and sanding down the seams. So I'm going to put this aside. And there's kind of a mess here. That, that's all. All of that is the paint, some of the paint that was on the inside of those uh, openings for the missile tubes. So this is just full of dust and needs to be made to go away. Um, I'll just show you quickly what I'll be doing when I get back. There's all these these pieces here. Is uh, just grab a missile tube. Missile tube is supposed to fit into the bottom. Supposedly, one is supposed to get all 15 is 15 plus one, 16 of them cemented in. And then this is supposed to simply slide over the tops of all of them. But, you know, you can still feel. It's 
Not bad. They're going through better than they were. And what's weird is that these things almost like flare at the top a little bit. Because when putting them in, there's a fair amount of clearance down here, but right at the top, like right here, just at the beginning of it, there isn't. And I'm afraid that one there, okay. I mean, it, it, this one is the same. Let's see if it's true of more of these. You know, like this one. Okay, so that one was fitting really quite well. This one, <laughs> this one, the diameter, it was the same hole. Watch. This is just amazing. This is, and this is not good. This is not good. This one goes in, whoop, just like that, right? Same, different, it came from a different kit. So it was molded slightly differently. Barely goes in at all. So it's like these things were molded at a, at a different diameter. The problem is that, um, I mean, I could sand this whole thing down, but it's easier to just make the holes bigger. So that, yeah, I'm dealing with that. I'm dealing with, I had to borrow tubes from more than one kit because, you know, the tubes were messed up. Let's see if it's true, this dark colored one. Yeah, the dark colored one goes in really well, right? Here's another one of the light colored ones. That one goes in. It's the same color as this one, but this one is a beast. So what I'm probably gonna to need to do is say, okay, which one of these holes gets enlarged? I'm really, really not looking forward to uh, that level of customization. Yeah, and this is this is definitely from that same kit, but that one's diameter is just wrong. So, like this one just slides through these things really easily, and this one will not go through any of them. But one of these tubes, one of these holes will and have to, like each one is going to have to be measured and. Um, this one needs to be custom fit. Hopefully there won't be more of that. But um, I'm going to take a break now, but uh, except for that one, which is a beast. Nice, huh? Looks through there. Sits on the base. Attaches at the top. And all of this goes in perfectly in line with the decks. Right? That's how it's supposed to go. So some things that could go wrong is like in the base here. I don't know if you can see it, they you know they'll go into that, but there's this little ridge around the bottom. Is that ridge supposed to be flush? with the floor because it's not on all of these the this little tab here is deeper than the hole into which it goes so part of the test is if this sits in the well in the little hole and then this goes over it like that does it line up with the gap between the decks determined by the um, slots on the bulkhead? I guess that is yet to be seen, isn't it? It's one of the things that needs to be tested. Because there's... Um, is a ridge that holds it up against there, and a ridge that holds it down here. You can see everything flops all over the place. Do they match up? And at this point, I would have to say, it looks like they don't. 
and that uh, if that's the case, then the bottoms of all of these, like the ones I thought I messed up, but maybe I didn't, might have to be filed down so that they fit a little deeper into the well. So this is the kind of thing I'm going to be doing after break, is trying to get these pieces held together like this. That's why I might use some rubber cement just to hold them in place a little bit. <laughs> yeah, this is great fun. I need about six different hands. Okay, well that's that's just that's just fascinating. Um the height <laughs> yeah they don't line up and that's this that's really cool um so these things go into the deck like that but they don't they don't line up perfectly what i mean is the um okay so these go in like this and this goes in like that okay and this goes supposed to go in like that. Yeah, and it's supposed to do this for 16 of them. Really? Yeah. Seriously, it's supposed to work like that for 16 of them. I do not know. I, I, I mean, other than just sort of forcing the issue, which probably I did when I was a kid. I don't see how this is supposed to work. Okay, there's that and that. That looks... This is the... I'm looking at the back of it. But it looks like that might... It might work. I have to. Uh... Yeah, I'll just see how it goes when I get more of them. See if I can hold them in place well enough. See if there's more than one of those rogue, one of those rogue nasty uh, missile tubes like this one. There's one that is too big. I suppose I could go in the kit and find a replacement. So if like 14 of these work, work, what I mean by working is that they um, go up through the hole easily, like that, more or less easily, I mean fairly easily anyway. If 14 of them work and one of them doesn't, I'm just going to see if I can find a replacement. Which, of course, will take a lot of time because I'll have to find a replacement and cement it together, file it down, um, go through that whole process. But, and here's another one. Okay, here's another one that's, the, that's way too tight. It's not as bad as that one, but it's, uh, it's not good. Okay, well, that's why I test fit everything because things don't fit. How does this one work? The missile launching, which is still not uh, not a disaster. This one goes here. 
Mm, that one actually goes through pretty well. Okay, well, enough of that. Uh, I need to take a break and then I'm going to come back. And the first thing I'm going to do is test all of these to see if they fit through the holes. And then I'm going to try to test fit to see if all of these parts will actually fit into the submarine hull. And then if I end up with like two or three missile tubes, like this one, I'm not sure, this one, yeah, that don't work, I'm going to have to decide whether to make a couple of these holes big enough to make them work, or whether I'll just uh, find replacements. A little pain. Yeah, here's another one. It seems to be this this color, this really light color kit that has larger diameter missile tubes. And I selected some of these um, from the other kit because, on the other hand, there's one of that color because I had flaws in the other tubes. So, yeah, I might have to, uh, after getting this far, To getting this far, I might have to replace two or three of these tubes with others. Very weird. Very weird. Okay. Um, yeah, that's why everything has to be test fit on this kit, because so much of the stuff doesn't fit, as I'm finding here. But I'm kind of hopeful, kind of hopeful that... Um, trying to get the warp out by bending this just enough so I split it, break it. That's what I need to do is just break this in half. I'm kind of hopeful that uh, the decks will fit and uh, at least I can move on. But it's really disappointing that some of these missile tubes are too big. Yeah, I know there's at least, this one just barely fits, but there's at least three of them that don't fit. Um, so I'll test the other ones. If they do fit, then I'll um, do some, I'll be do the test fitting. There's enough there to do the test fitting in the hull. But then I'll have to um, either decide to make some of these holes much bigger or see if I can find uh, replacement tubes for these from the parts that I've got. But at least this, although it needs a big amount of sanding and filing, especially unfortunately right on the front here, just a lot of sanding and filing to um, get rid of the seam. Because unfortunately on this one, this, unlike the others where the seams are on the side, this seam apparently need, is right in the front. Um, I don't think, I'm not sure if the lever can be set up so it's on the side or not. It goes in here like this. Fit in that hole. Yeah. Um, I'll have to look at the directions and see, I think, but the lever is supposed to be in the front so you can actually get to it. It would make sense if it were on the side. Actually, it would make a lot of sense if it were on the side because these things are set up so that this uh, vertical thing, you know, I guess it's supposed to be set up so that it's here and that you are supposed to somehow be able to reach between the decks with your finger and push that down and launch the missile. Yeah, I don't really see quite how that works. No. No, they just show it with the with the lever in the front and it's rotated 90 degrees from all the rest of them in terms of the the uh, pipe on the side. Very odd. Another oddity. Another oddity of the uh, is the design of this 
I mean, it's kind of a clever thing to be able to sort of fake launch a little plastic missile thing out of a tube, but... Um, Yeah, well, I'll make that decision when it's time to actually do the assembly, which could be about seven years from now. I do need to take a break. I will be back in about a half hour, at which point I will then test fit all these tubes in these holes to see how many of them don't work. And then uh, test fit things into the hull with the ones that do work. And then uh, decide whether to paint the inside of the hull, which I might just go ahead and do because it has to happen at some point, and then if there's time, uh, the, the tubes that these, so far three, that are too big to fit through the holes, as opposed to the ones that aren't, we'll see how that goes, and then I'll, you know, the cement by then should be set well enough that I can sand and file this down so that the seam is gone. Yeah, I expected this to be uh, kind of frustrating, and it is kind of frustrating. And this brush, this brush is working for the cement. And I think, well, that's what I'll use in the future until the bristles are completely dissolved. So, yeah, I'll be back in, like I said, about a half hour and uh, continue working on the submarine. See if we can get it to the point where progress is visible. Find out soon. Thanks. Well, that was more or less a half a quarter plus 10 minutes. <laughs> Sorry about that, but things keep coming up during break, and then it's, you know, there it is. Um, so, going back to pieces, fitting or not fitting. These are missile tubes. They need to go on here, slide through here, and attach to the bottom of this. So far, I don't know what, if any of this will work, so I'm going to be... Um, well, I tested some of these, and I'm finding out that some of these tubes are too big for the holes. And some of them are fine. I borrowed these. I got all of these from different kits because they all had different problems and flaws. <clears throat> so I'm going to test them to see which ones, you know. Test them on just some random holes here. You know, and they, they're they're close. Um, what's weird about them is that most of them are a little bit larger on the top, like they're flared on the top. So I might end up having to sand those down a little bit later. You know, just the tops. But if they f mostly fit, then I'll be able to use them. This one fits really nicely. Um, these three don't. And then at some point, it's weird, like this one fits through here, but it's not fitting through there. There's probably a problem with the, the hole. <clears throat> so I might have to replace those three, which is a pain because, you know, I have to find them, cement them, sand them down, that sort of thing. Anyway, we'll get, get a bunch that seem to mostly work. And if they mostly work, then I can use them to do some test fitting in the hull. This one, this one right here, that hole there, seems to be particularly um, uncooperative. Like there's a lot of paint built up in it or something. Anyway, um, I'm gonna do some test fitting, but eventually I'll have to be doing some serious fitting of all the parts together. I'm going to help some. <clears throat> Again, it's just like right at the very top. Like, it, like I said, it's like almost like it flares out at the top. 
I'm going to have to sand down the tops of all of these. <clears throat> Make sure they fit. Some fit really well and some don't. Okay, this is another one of those not working. And that's a real... And it's a real pain to have them just not work like that. But yeah, they all seem to have come from the same kit because I borrowed parts from three different kits in order to get enough. But this one kit, and this one is, this one close is, yeah, this one is close to working. I can make it. I just need to, uh, like I said, need to get rid of the flare out at. <laughs> Okay, that's weird. That hole is really tight. This hole isn't. <clears throat> I'd like to have to replace three rather than four. <clears throat> It fits really well there, so these holes are not all the same diameter. <clears throat> but, you know, that's just another sitting around for another 15-20 minutes, reaming out the, the holes. But this one is usable. These three appear to be, like, this is just not going to work at all. Now, Might have fit some of these. <clears throat> I don't know. I'll have to deal with these later uh, to decide whether I just want to try to sand them down um, or whether I want to replace them. So, what I need to do is a whole lot of stuff that will make it look like I'm not getting anything done is I need to find out whether by putting these three decks together into the bulkheads with the missile tubes in place, whether the thing will fit or not. Whether, or whether some major manipulation of various and sundry parts needs to be done to get this all to work. Um, so these three aside, which are too big and either need to be sanded down or replaced, this one, which is the one that launches a missile, needs uh, needs significant filing and sanding because the seam is very obvious right in the front. The two halves of this tube were not the same, but um, at least it's in one. It's glued together. It's not falling apart, and the missile launch bit. You know this little lever. Um, seems to be working it's not cemented in place so that's good that's another thing that needs to be done but the uh the fitting into the hull really has to happen sooner than later so i'm going to uh, try to make that happen <clears throat> i'm gonna need to move a lot of this stuff out of the way because the hull of the submarine is really quite long okay fills up a lot of the space. I might even move, try to move the camera back some <clears throat> so that you all can see a lot of it. Um, I discovered as you wa if you were watching the stream earlier that trying to hold these things in place with my hands doesn't work. Uh, there's just too many moving parts. So I'm going to take like, I don't know, like five of these. I'm going to take five of these and rubber cement them into the base so that they just stay put, but also in a way that allows me to take them out later and clean them up because these have to be primed and painted and fit and everything else. But this is just a test to see 
but it, you know, just how possible this is, given the parts that I'm working. Um, let me get the hull of the submarine and show it to you. There. Camera up. Oh. Yeah, there's the first third of the submarine. Okay. This came out really pretty well. I'm going to show it off. Uh, the torpedo room. The detail. If you look in the back there, you can see the, the really cool detail in the galley. The pots and pans and the coffee urn and the cabinets. Um, the storeroom. All the control stuff in the control room. These beasts, these were really difficult to work with. This, these tube, these slide in and out of these tubes. It, these are the tubes I've talked about. They were, each of them was a different length and each of them was not, would not fit in that gap between the bottom and the top. Okay. So they all needed to be um, filed and sanded. And you can see I got it pretty close. There's still, there's a little gap at the top. Um, so it wasn't perfect, but they're working. The other thing that was a problem is that they didn't line up. Okay. The, uh, the, the deck here, it's actually off. You can't see it, but like almost an eighth of an inch. These things were toward the bow by an eighth of an inch. And so everything was like diagonal or crooked. It didn't fit. These didn't line up with these decks. So there's four decks here through which these slide and those all lined up, but this didn't line up with it underneath. In fact, I found out that that, I believe, is a manufacturing flaw, design and manufacturing flaw in the whole submarine, because I saw on, on eBay, they were selling a one of these things, a, a later version with a plastic cover over it. I forget which one it was, but uh, it uh, <clears throat> they gave them different names as they produced different versions of the same kit, essentially. The uh, it was slanted when they put it together, it was diagonal instead of vertical. Okay, this big section here is where all this missile stuff goes. All right, so this bulkhead here is actually supposed to be in the submarine already. I'm just going to try to like snap it into place. You know, even this, not, I mean, nothing in, nothing in this model really fits very well. Eventually, I, like while we're here, not, I would say like 80% of these pieces didn't fit. That's an exaggeration. It just felt like that because nothing was working. Um, there's a little slot and a little tab that are supposed to line up, but just even getting it in line, right? It wants to fit like this. It wants to fit like that, but that's off by almost a quarter of an inch compared to the orientation it's supposed to be in. This is why you don't even need to cement these things in, okay? If you can actually get them into place, the uh, they grip so tightly like that that it doesn't have to be cemented. So that one's not cemented. These are supposed to then, right? This is supposed to just slide, slide into place. In fact, it's supposed to, with the missiles in here and the deck above it, that whole thing is supposed to slide into place and it kind of does, all right? Which is kind of nice. Um, when I paint this, Everything down here is going to be painted this dark gray. These are essentially ballast tanks. Okay, like there's a big one up here. But that's pretty much what they are, is ballast tanks. And then, as you can see, this is light blue here and here. So all of that gets painted light blue. And then when this one supposedly just slides into place, it's supposed to not only just slide into place, but it's supposed to slide into plates and attach to the tops of the... Uh, 
missile tubes, okay? Everything above this is going to be painted dark gray as well. So in between here are supposed to be the missile tubes, and this one goes like this, supposedly. And that's not sliding into place really at all. It's almost like it's a little too big. Um, or it's not lined up correctly. Oh, huh. yeah, well, part of it is that it's... This is why I don't cement things in, because they have to come in and out. It's backward. I'm not sure it makes any difference, but it goes in this way. Not the other way. You can also see it's sort of warped. Anyway, it's, uh, you can see just how not so much easily everything goes together. Okay, so that's how the decks are supposed to fit. You can see a little warp. Um, and then the missile tubes are supposed to go between them. Now, I'm going to take this out. I'm going to take one of these missile tubes. And I'm going to just see what it's like in terms of uh, being in place. Okay, that's not bad. Um, let me do another one here. To end up doing is not following the directions. Okay, I am and when I get this, when I finally get this to the point where I'm actually assembling this, is I'm not going to be following the directions. I'm going to be test cementing all of these together, and I'm not going to use model cement. I might use. I think I'm going to either use contact cement or something else because when the, when the pieces are kind of put together, I mean, that, like here, this, this one, this one leaves, this one's a little small, okay? And that, just the alignment of everything, you know, getting them to fit and be aligned is, there's so many pieces that need to be in alignment and like this one just, just isn't. Okay, it's beginning to look like it's possible, though. Um, so I'm going to take the top out. Put some of these just through here. And I'm going to test, and I'm going to test the ability of this to be put together. Isn't seriously <laughs> I'm going to test the ability of this to be put together without cement. Really, that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to do that by pushing all of these up. You're going to say, Why in the world would I try that? I mean, why, what, what are you thinking, really? And what I'm thinking is that, as you can see, these pieces fit pretty tightly. Yeah. Um, that goes in like that. This will slide in like this. 
instead of these are just sort of sitting in here. That's just stupid. That one, that one is the missile launching one. I don't know why I did that. If I can get these like rotated and nestled down, nestled down in to their little wells with their little tabs sort of lined up. This, they're fairly easy to do here. I mean, without the top deck on, it's pretty easy to do that. But, you know, I'm saying it's pretty easy compared to some of the stuff that's happened. It is actually pretty easy. Okay, so say I got 16 of them lined up like that. And then I've got this thing. The other nice thing is it takes the warp out. theoretically be possible to, with a little manipulation to slide this deck this deck into place okay and then one at a time kind of snap those into place. Yes, this will fit. These things will fit. See, the whole thing is there. You can imagine there being 16 of these, not just like a few. Okay, imagine that. Imagine that there are 16 of them. They don't line up perfectly. This one's a little bit, no, it's not, it's weird. It looks like it's tilted, but it's not. Imagine that there are 16 of them and not five, okay? And if they're put together, they can be put together without, without cementing any of them. And that would be good because Every time cement is used, is just an opportunity for a huge mess. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to say, at this point, I managed to scratch that. No dirt. Um, that this is now. This is gone. This is now in the realm of. This is actually possible that it is actually at this point possible to get this missile deck put together and to do it pretty much cement free okay and it's not going to be perfect um you know some of these are going to look a little weird they're not going to fit perfectly but i you know it's just like the rest of this like the the sheets on the bunks, the lines are not perfect, okay? Um, but yeah, uh, this is this is a pleasant surprise that I'm going to, I am going to end up assembling this thing without cement, okay? None of this really is cemented into the hall in front except a few things like the, uh, like the escape hatch. But I know now that this can go in 
This can go in cement free. And then just as that goes in, this bit here, this bit here goes here. I bet this can be done cement free as well. And there's just like there's just barely enough room to get, to get your its fingers in there to hold things in place. <clears throat> this is like a lead. This this is in the real submarine life, like a lead barrier because this is where the reactor goes. This is one of those things that there's there's only two pieces, right? But they need to fit together just right and bit without cement as well. Okay, this is not done, okay? Because the submarine, the missile launching tubes all need to be yellow. They need to be painted yellow. And I've got some that don't fit. And then there are some like this one that don't fit very well. So that one's going to go in the back somewhere. I'm not sure why it doesn't fit very well, but it doesn't, it doesn't set down in the bottom hole right. Okay. But what I know now <clears throat> is that I can, in fact, get these pieces into the submarine looking adequate, if not great. At least they'll be adequate. And everything will fit. And I don't need to cement anything. Okay, like even if this wiggles a little bit, I can use tweezers or something and, and fit it into place. And this, these decks, although they don't fit perfect, you know, sometimes you just manipulate them a little bit and they'll snap into place. That happened up front a lot. Um, yeah. That's how that's going to go. Um, I think, yeah, there's a deck that goes across the top here. When I paint this, there's some of the some machinery things that will be painted a different color. I don't see anything on the inside of this hull that needs to be painted other than just the wall color. So all this stuff underneath here and above, and this little line above here, are going to be painted this dark gray color. And then... Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's wiggly, right? And then, um... Yeah, I mean, it's not perfect. The decks aren't flat and all of that, but it looks... You know, if you look at it from a distance, it's, uh, it looks, it look okay. <clears throat> and I am not going to cement any of this in place. Just don't have to do that. Uh, so, what I need to do yet, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be done yet, um, is I need to, you know, work on the bottoms of these, well, after they're painted. After they're painted, I'll work on them because the diameters will change again. <clears throat> but I need to gently take this apart. in reverse order. That's the last bit that goes in. <clears throat> First bit that comes out. <clears throat> and all the rest of this falls apart nicely at the end. All right. So, yeah. Good news. Good news, everyone. Is that will work. Uh, 
Um, <clears throat> I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the light blue first. Most of this is light blue. And then I can determine the line and paint the dark gray upper and lower over the light blue when I get around to painting. All right, I can put this away now uh, before I break something. Oh, yeah, I can show you the that piece, that one ladder. This is going to be... There are these challenges, you know. The submarine model cannot leave you unchallenged in any way, shape, or form. So for some reason, they decided that, you know, in order to get to this escape hatch, you needed to have a ladder. <clears throat> and the ladder just needs to be somehow with tweezers and little bits of cement installed between there and there. I think it looks better without the ladder. I don't know. But I'll, at some point, maybe try to install that. All right, that was uh, that was a surprise in that it it looks like it's going to work. And now I can put this aside, at least for a moment. Um, I think I, I'll try to paint this stuff. I think I'm going to try to paint this yet uh, today, but. Um, I want to get a little bit more fitting and sanding done. This deck, leave this deck alone. Um, I'm not going to mess with this. This one, I'm going to do the, I'm going to wait until after I get back from travel before I uh, do fitting and sanding, okay? because I want to make sure that the cement is, is set. I don't, want, I don't want to mess it up. Uh, this deck, those will have to be reamed out a little bit more later. This needs to be sanded and filed so that the seam is gone. This is going to be a real test. This one, not much needs to be done to this. Other than that, this needs to be opened up. A little bit and then just like this you know like the others were and the when I sand and file the tube um, I'll make sure that it fits I need to decide what to do about those three torpedo tubes. I mean, not missile tubes, not torpedo tubes, the missile tubes that don't fit. The diameter is too big. Um, these work, so I've got 12 out of the 15 that, that will likely work adequately. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with the other one. It's the... I said I could just ream out three of these holes to make them fit, but this one just, for example, is just way too big. So my, uh, these are my options. Okay. I can ream out three holes here so that three of them are big enough for these to fit. I can sand down the entire outside of this to reduce the diameter, okay, so that it will fit through the hole. Or I can find three more tubes, just three three different ones, and see if um, you know if they aren't too badly flawed. Like I can put them in the back where you can't see them or something. If the dent in them doesn't show that much, then I can replace those three. Um, those are my three options. This though, painting the tops of these, I think what I am actually really going to do is I'm going to take this part from. A different submarine kit and use it as a mask either as is even though the diameter of the holes are a little bit too big for the hatches okay use it as a mask for spray painting or I will start out using it as a mask and then put tape tape over it and find a hole punch that's that diameter <clears throat> so that it's a better one and I can even since I have those spare parts and, you know, I don't know if those kits will ever have any value or not. They might just be thrown away. <clears throat> you 
Um, I can even test it. All right. Uh, I am just dithering here because there's things things get need to be done and I'm not getting the order of them right. It was pretty cool finding out that I can get these pieces in and they will stay in place without cement because I really didn't want to do that. It's, there's too much manipulation of each individual tube in each individual deck to really want to cement things in place and have them just be that way. Uh, what I can do though is I can paint, I'm going to paint at least one coat of the light blue in here. And just That would be some painting. I could get some major chunks of painting done. Let me look at the next one. The reactor deck. Yeah, there's just a, there's a couple of decks that go into the reactor room. I guess the reactor almost kind of like sits on the floor of the submarine. I guess if there's a meltdown, it just goes through the hull. These are watertight, you know. So it would do like a... Yeah, it would melt down, go through the bottom of the hull, and just disappear in the ocean floor, I guess. Um, yeah, so this whole reactor, all these reactor parts go below the deck here, and in front of this bulkhead, and then there's a... This, this is it. The, the whole submarine, the entire submarine is run off of this one pipe that goes through this hole into the all the machinery rooms. Everything on the submarine is run right off of that one pipe that takes superheated hot water out of the um, out of the reactor. It'd be kind of fun actually doing that. Trying to paint this is supposed to be a cutaway. It's supposed to be a cutaway reactor where you can see it like glowing red hot or white hot or whatever, however hot it is on the inside here. So anyway, that'll probably be more work than I, than I would have thought otherwise. And then the bulkhead, of course, has machinery and hatches and fire extinguishers and things that all need to be detail painted like this. Because this bulkhead is part of the machine room. It's painted green like this with the same kind of color schemes. Um... I just wanted to see what was going on here because I'm going to have to paint the inside of the hull of this section too, but I can do that. And it's just going to be... Um, it'd be this dark gray color. That ha I didn't paint this section because it's walled off. You can't see it. So I'm thinking this whole thing will end up being dark gray and some of these will be highlighted. Little, these little dials and bits of machinery and things I'll be I'll paint over those but um, since this that'll get painted before I assemble it I don't I'm just not going to worry about it at this point trying to plan ahead okay so as far as the missile tubes go um, three of them don't fit I need to find replacements this one is the missile launching one I haven't screwed it up. It's I haven't broken it. It seems to still be working. Uh, it needs to be sanded and filed so that the seams don't show. Once I figure out what to do with these three that don't fit, either replacing them or manipulating them, uh, then I need to prime them and paint them yellow and then test fit everything again. Right? But the, the first test at least was was quite encouraging it said it is it is in fact possible to assemble all of this and do it without cementing any pieces in place which gives me the opportunity to manipulate them so that they actually fit in the right spots uh, so if I'm going to do any relaxing painting there's a lot of it this entire hall from here to here this is the largest expanse the largest single expanse of paint on the entire submarine um, um, is what I'm going to do. 
I think I'm going to turn it over because I'm being right-handed. I'm going to be painting like in this direction. And hopefully it will turn out okay without too terribly brush marks. Um, it isn't going to show very much because there'd be all these bright yellow missile tubes in front of it, but still you'll be able to see behind it. And I want it to be the same color as this. And then I keep forgetting, but at some point I need to, on this, get out the fine tipped felt pen, fin the very fine felt tipped pen, and uh, do the ladder. So that the ladder looks like, like that ladder. Yeah, so I'll get this painted, and if there's really any time left in the stream, I don't know. It, I mean, it should go fast, but with me, you never know. Get this painted, get this at least one coat on. It might need two. Then um, I'm going to see if I can find three replacement missile tubes with the other kits. Because that would be... If I can find three adequate missile tube replacements, that would be by far the fastest way of moving forward. So as I'm doing this, I'll just remind everybody that I'm going to not to be streaming for about two weeks starting Friday. So I'll be missing most of the rest of November. I hope that uh, those of you who enjoy watching this will keep, you know, stay in touch with like social media or whatever so that you can you know know when i come back and you can join again because i don't want i don't want to lose my audience because of a an absence but i want to let you know that it's just temporary and just like the couple of times over the summer earlier when i was away um, i do come back and i paint mini figs and dungeon tiles and on Wednesdays struggle with the submarine. Submarine has been kind of a struggle. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, now let me get the right brush. I'm gonna pull my sleeves up a little bit. This is this is a uh, a D1, right? Don't worry, I have a plan because I rolled a D1. It's a Dungeons and Dragons themed sweatshirt. Okay, well, this large expanse of light blue paint is about to be painted. And it always worries me, this paint in particular. Just, it levels nicely, but it doesn't start nicely when I mean level. down into where it will be gray. Side up to where, because the gray will be painted later. go out of my way to make it go up a little too far because um, I don't know, be dealing with a lot of touch up later.
thing up here and painting it up too far because when I paint it gray later, I'll just be painting down into it. Yeah, I don't want to... Yeah, I'm going to just make a mess of this. I can't really overpaint this stuff because it sets up really fast and then I'm better off just leaving well enough alone and then coming back and putting a second coat on it. I don't... I don't really want the paint in the gap there. Or if there is, I want it to be uniform, right? Like if there's paint in the gap in one place, I want it to be all the way around. That'll actually help hold it in place. The paint is an adhesive. I was told once, and it is true. Now paint is a pigmented adhesive. Here. That should be okay. All right. So I did some relaxing painting. I'm going to let that dry. Hopefully it'll level nicely. Then I'll look at it and see if there's... Like, and I can see one already. Just like where these lines, these pipes ran through. There's spots where the where it wasn't painted, but I'll, I'll look at it with my head magnifier probably and uh, do touch up. But if I keep messing with it, I'm just gonna leave brush marks. So I'm gonna stop. And then I can always just do tiny little spots of paint and touching up later. Okay, I am now done with touching this. All right, I'm gonna take this, which is now you know, mostly a submarine, and it'll be even more submarine up to here sometime in the near future, and put it back out of the way where it is less likely to be damaged. I stuck my finger in it. Okay. Just, I'm not going to do it now because it'll dissolve the paint underneath. But it was, fortunately, it's at the very bottom, you know, where it's not going to show very much. But um, yeah, I stuck my finger in the wet paint. I was doing while I was off camera, muttering to myself and sticking my finger in the wet paint and marring the surface, which actually was pretty nice and not uh, brush marked, but now there'll be a spot, is uh, looking for the spare, the extra tor uh, missile tubes, okay? And there's, and there's a whole bunch of them here, right? There's quite a lot of them. And I need to find three. The problem with these is that they have, like I said, they have like visible dents on them. This one has fingerprints. That's probably was a good one, but it's re rejected now. Is they, they all have something wrong with them. Um, they have a visible dent. This one's not too bad. I'm going to find some that are not too bad. 
It's basically what I'm doing is just finding some... Oh, that's not too bad. That probably can be salvaged. A lot of these just have glue on the outside. That could be sanded off. I don't know. This one might not be salvageable. There was a reason why they were rejected. This one just has gaps all over the place that could potentially be filled in. Um, a lot of these are just... They, they were badly cemented together. You know, so that they're marred on the outside. Okay, this one's possible. This one's possible. What I'm doing with the last bits is I'm trying to find replacements for those tubes. This one has a really bad dent. And it's possible that I can... I can locate it so that the dent is that isn't going to show I mean otherwise it's not too bad I mean, I'd like four of them that are okay this one this one's not good yeah I'm looking at the same one over and over again that's kind of a waste of time isn't it another one so this one, when it was cemented together by whoever owned this kit before, just left gaps. And the, the, the gap can potentially be filled in, but it's easier, it's easier not to deal, it's easier to deal with one that doesn't have a gap. This one's not as bad. This one's pretty bad. Not too bad. So it's one thing for the seam to, to show because the the parts don't quite fit together. It's another for the seam to show because there's just a big gap in it. This one is this one's possible. Not good. This one's really this one's really a mess. And this one's not good. So I've got five here from which I need to select the best three. So this was an alternative George Washington that I purchased, but you can see somebody started it. Um, they completed this and they this. And I don't know what they used as glue, but you could, it all fell apart when I took it out of the box. All this stuff came out, but everything is like marred. It, it isn't, they didn't use model cement because it didn't um, dissolve the plastic. So I'm not sure what they used. And of course they didn't paint any of this, which was okay. I mean, if I needed to, I could have broken this up and um, especially like the bulkheads and things and probably reused them. but. Yeah, it means what it was. So, um, I'm going to be filing and sanding. So, I'm going to get out my filthy paper here. And I'll be covering this up when I do it, but I want to pick which three I'm going to be, be working with. Carefully select things in a you know that don't really much matter probably. So this one's okay. We work. I'll do that one. Um, it's got kind of a, a really nasty dent at the top, but again, if I pay attention, I can orient it this way so it doesn't show. I'll just have to really pay attention when I assemble this as to what goes where so that the, the flaws are least obvious. I'm a little concerned about these light colored ones because it's the same color as the ones that seem to not want to fit. I'm just going to see if I can work with these three. 
This one has... Let's see how much the seam shows after I filed them down. Be coming down to, well, let's try to show the good side, right? So hopefully these three will work. I can't test them yet because they have these uh, spurs at the top. Um, start by filing those off before I before I go through all the trouble of filing all the seams down. I'm going to file off the the burrs and make sure that they fit through the holes, right? Like I said, these all flare at the top. Bevel the top off a little bit where it fits into the top deck so it doesn't show. And if after removing the burrs, they slide through the holes in the deck, then I know that I can um, I'll be able to use them and be able to get file and sand the seams off like I will with the missile launching one. And then I can proceed with the priming and the painting. As I'm doing this, because I'll be wrapping up pretty soon and then gone for two weeks. I want to just thank everybody for supporting Dyson Dungeons. Relaxing painting with Dyson Dungeons is kind of a sideshow. The main theme is our Dungeons and Dragons campaign which has been going on for quite some time now. Streams on Twitch with a live chat three Sundays a month at two. I really want to encourage everybody to catch that. If you can't catch the, the stream with the live chat, you can catch episodes on YouTube and podcast. All of the episodes from number one all the way up to where we are now, I think can be seen on YouTube and you don't have to watch all of them but you might want to you know if you're just joining in and you want to catch up on character development and storyline and all those other really cool things that happen during an extended campaign that'd be that would be one way to do it is to catch that um, relaxing painting with Dyson Dungeons started out because we do our own dungeon tiles. They're printed on the 3D printers like the ones behind me. And they are featured when we have combat. Combat events uh, during our campaign. And I've shown those to you there. I don't know. Yeah, I might have time yet this stream, but I want to make sure I want to test fit these so that I can move along with a little bit more speed in the, when I get starting to stream again after uh, my absence, my temporary absence. I am not going away, I am just not ending. As you can see, there's a lot of submarine left. So it's not anywhere close to ending, but I'll be gone for a couple of weeks. And then come back and hopefully be making some progress both on screen and off screen. I need to build some things to move this along, actually. Keep saying I probably will try to do off screen, and maybe I will. Or maybe I'll just use up a stream to do it. Anyway, this started out because of painting minifigs and dungeon tiles for the campaign. And started to stream this. And then uh, Submarine Wednesday started because I didn't have any minifigs or dungeon tiles to paint. 
one Wednesday. So I started doing models. And one model is this one, which is the Renwall Cutaway Submarine. The thing with lots of parts and detail and is yeah, coming along. So if these three fit, then I will replace. Yes, they are going to work. They're still flared out at the top. You can still see that they stick a little bit at the top. And they are all flawed in one way or another. But um, being slightly flawed at this point is way preferable to just not being usable. Okay, so these three are now Okay, well, I dropped them in and one of them bounced out of the box onto the floor. I'm not, I'll get it. If I can remember, I'll go get it after the stream is over rather than use up more of your precious time watching me not be on camera, boundering around, sliding, or trying to pick something up from the floor. But what I know is that these pieces will fit, that in fact, it will go together. I'm tempted to take some of this paint out, but to be honest, um, the the tighter the fit, the better it is. Um, and just in terms of everything holding on to each other without cement. All right. Why are these two here? These two were an option that I'm not using. Now I better come to again. I guess I had these out as uh, potentials and decided not to use them. Because I've got well, 12 in here that are filed and sanded. This makes 15, that's 16. So, yeah, that was just a little confusing there. These require a fair amount of manipulation, yet yeah. if you'd watched me before, it took up like half a stream just to get these seams down and then sand them so that uh, it was fairly smooth. All of these tubes are now somewhat oval and because I they're kind of flat spotted where the seams were, but that's better than having the seams. So these three need to be cleaned up as does this one, which is the one with the little lever in it and the spring that launches a missile, sort of. So those need to be sanded and filed. Okay, these need to be just test fit again a little bit later. Um, they all need to then be primed and painted bright yellow. They are glossy yellow. That's the only glossy part of the entire submarine. I need to do this ladder, which I keep remembering and then keep forgetting. I'm not going to do it at the end of the stream because I know that that will be a disaster. Um, as I lose concentration and focus a little bit. And then I need to figure out somehow or other how to make a mask out of one of these spare decks to spray paint the uh, match covers. Broken box, which makes it a little bit difficult. But let me see. There it is. This is uh, this is the deck that will be that could be turned into a mask. It's got a really bad warp in it. Okay, but I can fasten down the edges with alligator clips or something. But this this badly warped piece will be sacrificed to be turned into a paint mask. That will be laid over, held down tightly, sacrificing some alligator clips in the process, and spray painted so that I get 
those hatch covers yellow. Right now, as I said, these holes are a little too big. Each one is a little bigger in diameter than the hatch. So either I'll do that and just have the hatch covers just be bigger, you know, the painted part, as long as they're really good, clean circles, they'll either be bigger than they should be, or I'll find some way of taping this, getting a punch that is that diameter and punching holes in the tape um, to match. But this, I'm going to keep this out. This is my sacrificial mask. Okay, so these are the right diameter. They're really close to being ready to be primed. These need to be sanded and filed and sanded before they can be primed. And then uh, spray painted yellow and then refit. So it'll be some, you know, filing down those things. Probably I'm going to sand down and bevel the tops of each of these just a little bit because I don't want the yellow paint once it's on there to scrape off. Um, probably like uh, three streams. I'm like maybe one, two, maybe even two if I do some of these things like setting up the, you know, the dowel system for priming and painting these and test painting some of this stuff, uh, like this mask. Oh, I'm going to get this out too, because this is, this is a sacrificial piece, okay, from that same model kit that is now the donor kit. Um, if I'm going to be spray painting using a mask, I want to test it, right? And I'm not going to test it on the kit. I'm going to keep this out as well. You know, why am I going to keep this out? I'm going to keep this out so that I can prime it. And I want to test the, the, the yellow spray paint. I want to make sure that works. So this, this is a test mask. This is a test uh, um, of painting these circles. This is a test of the yellow paint to see if it's going to work at all. Glad I remembered just to do that kind of stuff. It is save moments later just little bits of time later it's fabulous see kind of a fun thing set those aside yeah so here's the submarine uh, this is the part I've gotten done so far Okay, I don't have a little guy sitting there. They have little guys that you can paint and stick all over the submarine. They're laying down in the bunks and sitting on the stools and stuff. Uh, but I, I, they look really dumb. I mean, they look really, they're very badly modeled. They look really stupid. Sorry, Renoir, but they do. This is what I'm working on now. You can see the yellow, the bright yellow. Um, that's the machinery that kind of looks like the stuff on the, on the model. And the control panel down there. These are all the things I don't, I don't, they, they have a different color for like the base and the vertical things here. I'm just, I'm not going to do that. That's just going to be next to impossible to get it done. Um, and then this is the reactor room and you can see this is the sort of fake cutaway reactor uh, i'm going to paint i'm going to play around probably with like sacrificial pieces or maybe some like a piece of the the sprue or the tree with different color combinations to make it look like it's like it's that this is the reactor core it's glowing and then these are the superheated coils um, that flow back and forth between the reactor, heating the water in this vessel that goes up and goes through this pipe. And then in the back, there's just a whole pile of this kind of machinery, like a gigantic version of this. 
Um, so this comes down to, you know, painting the floor, painting the detail on the bulkheads, painting these pieces of machinery and the escape hatch and stuff with this kind of beige colored paint. Um, if there's pipes built into the floor or whatever, getting those done. You know, so there's detail painting on here, but it's not as much as it was up front. So the, other than, you know, messing around with the colors for the reactor, this is relatively straightforward because I'm going to be using the green and the tan and the beige paints that I've used before, detailing with the fire extinguishers and the hatches. So that it's stuff I've done before. There's just a lot of it. And then um, hopefully all of that will just fit together like this without having to be cemented in. I can just slide it in, escape hatch being probably the only thing that will really need to be cemented. And once all of that's done, then I get to work on the tail and the nose. The nose is just the nose, okay, that just gets cemented on. The tail has like operating propeller, all of which are broken, so I need to re repair or fabricate a replacement and then these things kind of flop around um there's other weird things like there's a little f there's a fin that goes on the other side of the of the sail that hasn't been installed that i don't know maybe i hope i remember um, but here you can see that the uh this is how it's supposed to work like the missile gets fired up Oh yeah, I need to paint that hatch yellow too when I do the yellow stuff. So there's these little plastic missiles that look kind of like this. I'll paint them, you know, shiny orangey red with, I guess you have to have stripes on it, why not? But the hatches are supposed to open and then that little spring I was showing you pops it out about almost that far, basically about that far above the submarine, assuming it doesn't bump into something on the way out. Anyway, yeah. Um, I now know that it is physically possible to get these pieces into place. Now I just need to be able to um, get them painted and fit so without scraping all the paint off and everything else, and then spending some time just manipulating parts until they snap into place like the stuff up here did, and they stay. And then up here in the hull, I don't know if you saw it when I had the hull out, there's this, this piece up here needs to get cemented in. Um, it just has uh, like hatchways in, but this one operates because that has to open up for the missile. So one more thing to remember. There's a bunch of other detail stuff, like the edges of the cutaway that need to be painted and things like that. But... Um, you know, at least you're seeing you're seeing evidence that progress is possible. Thank you all. I will see you in a couple of weeks. And I'm not sure if I'll be starting on a Wednesday or a Monday. I don't recall. I don't remember my schedule well enough to be able to tell you. But the next thing you see will either be some relaxing painting of minifigs. Or you'll be seeing a future very slow but steady, well, mostly steady progress in uh, getting this submarine put together. Thank you all. Take care. Uh, become a follower. Become a sponsor. Go to patreon.com slash dice and dungeons and become a patron. That would be appreciated. Thank you all. See you in a couple weeks. Bye.